Hello, my name is Patrick Altmaier. I'm a first year PhD student in trustworthy artificial intelligence at Delft University of Technology. And today I'll be introducing effortless Bayesian deep learning through Laplace Redux. I'll start off by making the case for Bayesian deep learning. Then I'll introduce a small uh, package I built um, by first starting from Bayesian logistic regression and then moving on to Bayesian neural networks. And finally, I'll also set out some goals and ambitions for this package. So in deep learning, we typically maximize highly uh, non-convex functions full of local optima. And in this uh, setting where we're typically highly underspecified in the data, um, there is typically many possible uh, solutions, as in parameter specifications, that yield uh, similar performance. Or as Wilson 2020 puts it here, parameters correspond to a diverse variety of compelling explanations for the data. And since theta is clearly a random variable, we should treat it that way. And to compute predictions, we're really after um, the posterior predictive distribution. In practice, people typically still rely on uh, the plug-in approximation, just plugging in the point estimates. But there are actually a number of uh, popular uh, approaches um, that work well for Bayesian deep learning. I'm listing a few of them here. Um, today, we're looking at Laplace Redux. The idea um, Laplace approximation is actually a very old concept. So let's uh, briefly have a look. It essentially relies on the Taylor approximation around the mode, around the MLE or map estimate. And it turns out that um, that results in, in the Gaussian uh, posterior centered around that mode with covariance equal to the inverse Hessian, so the second order gradient. Um, and here we see a nice illustration from, from uh, Kevin Murphy's recent book on probabilistic machine learning. On the right, you have the uh, Laplace uh, posterior. So let's look at uh, how we can use this or implement this in Julia. Um, this project actually started out as my first uh, coding project in Julia. I was reading the first chapters of Kevin Murphy's book and uh, decided to, to code up Bayesian logistic regression from, from scratch. Uh, I also wanted to learn Julia at the time. Uh, so both things together worked out nicely. Um, finally, this resulted in me also coding up this uh, package, which moves, you know, beyond logistic regression to uh, Bayesian deep learning. So with all of that said, let's dive in. As promised, we start uh, from Bayesian logistic regression and a little bit of maths. So we assume a, a Gaussian prior, which corresponds to um, a rich, rich loss a rich penalty in the loss function. Um, and it turns out that for, for logistic regression, we actually have the uh, Hessian in, in closed form. So that made uh, coding that first project uh, quite easy. Um, so here we have the, the gradient formula coded in, in Julia. But realizing that logistic regression can also be uh, rephrased as, as a neural network with, without any hidden layers and uh, sigmoid activation, um, I started there when, when thinking about applying these concepts to, to deep learning. Um, so that's what you see here in the code. And here we have sort of the first uh, output from the package. Um, we can see that on the left, we have the plugin approximation for the simple binary classification problem. And on the right, um, using the simple API call, uh, the Laplace uh, representation of that neural network. And uh, we can see that these uh, contours, they fan out. So far away from the training data, our predictions uh, are, are conservative. So we don't predict with high confidence. These ideas carry over very easily to more complex settings. So here I use a slightly more uh, involved neural network with actually a hidden layer. Um, the API call is the same. And we also have a slightly more involved data set uh, where the, the samples are not uh, linearly separable. Uh, but again, we see on the left, the uh, plugin approximation, which is probably too confident in some regions. 
and on the right, the more conservative Laplace approximation. Yeah, just a very quick note on the prior. Um, so our prior assumption about uh, uh, the parameters and how uncertain we are around uh, that prior um, obviously has an impact on the, the final posterior. Uh, we can see this here nicely that if we assume uh, zero uncertainty, essentially zero uncertainty around the prior, um, that all weights are zero, then that will be reflected in the predictions. They will all be pretty close to, to 50% in the, in the classification setting. A small detail that I skipped, not, I won't go into this too much, but essentially all of the recent success of this relies on uh, this paper by Imaidal, um, where they uh, propose using a linearized neural network instead of just sampling, uh, sampling from the Laplace posterior, which has been shown already 20 years ago to not perform very well. And just to give you some intuition, the, the Hessian uh, approximations that we use, uh, particularly in the, in the higher dimensional uh, setting, uh, involve some sort, sort of linearization. So we should also be linearizing things in, at the prediction stage. Finally, some goals and ambitions for the package. So yeah, I'm very happy to be presenting this uh, work here. It's very much a work in progress. Um, and the package is still bare bones. Uh, so one of the goals I have is to, to bring this to the same level of maturity as uh, its Python uh, counterpart, which was uh, came also out of this group um, it, that involves uh, Alex Immer and, and uh, Eric Daxberger and others. Problems, of course, as for everyone, uh, limited capacity, but I'm also fairly new to Julia, so I'm hoping uh, through this talk to attract some some contributors uh, for this project. There are a few easy wins. For example, it would be very easy to add support for multi-class and regression problems. Um, we also need to do some due diligence. Um, but then there are also some harder, uh, harder uh, problems to tackle. Uh, one of them being uh, hyperparameter tuning. We can approach that in, in different ways. And it would be nice to have that uh, sort of out of the box in, in the package. With all of that said, um, I'll leave you with a couple of uh, pointers to additional resources here. So there are two, two blog posts that I wrote um, about this, this package and the topic. Um, there's also a, a slide pack um, generously provided by uh, Professor Lobato from Cambridge and the package docs. Uh, in the docs, you will also find this presentation. I'm actually serving it uh, from the package docs uh, right now. Um, so yeah, uh, do dive in and feel free to reach out in the future. Thanks very much.